what is money? What is money? Well, in theory, money is a way for you to store your economic energy and not have it stolen from you by a bad investment decision, right? Perfect money is, in fact, the solution to all your problems. But what is good money? Gold has been an aspirational money, but it's defective. And the reason gold is defective is because we keep creating more of it and you can't custody it. And so if I keep creating two or three percent more, then that means that the half-life of your economic energy in gold is 35 years. It means every 35 years, your money is cut in half or the value of your wealth is cut in half. The only way to make gold perfect is to stop mining it and make it possible to teleport and carry around in your head. And of course, this is not happening with gold. It is difficult to create sound money. How difficult? Well, Bitcoin has gotten 50 trillion times more difficult to mine since it it's, uh, was formed. 50 trillion. Now, what is that telling you? Well, for the money to be sound, I have to cap the supply. And in order to cap the supply, I have to make it exponentially more difficult to create it. And human beings in this small corner of the world, Bitcoiners, who have been ignored, they figured out how to create 50 trillion times more work in those 14 years. That's, that's what you're fighting against. And that's why commodities make awful money. That's why anything that can be produced with human intellect and capital will always be awful money. Because you're betting against human intellect. I'm gonna actually store my money in something that you can make more of, and I'm gonna bet you're too stupid to make more of it. Okay, that's an awful bet. Somebody somewhere with less money than you has a lot of time on their hand to figure out how to get your money. That's why you need something like the difficulty adjustment. And that's why it's so difficult to create sound money. Bitcoin is sound money. Now, people around the world use all sorts of assets in order to store their economic energy. All these monetary assets have a different natural frequency. For example, oil gets produced with a stock to flow ratio, which is extremely low. The Argentine peso is, is doubling in supply every one, two years. Uh, silver is growing at a fairly rapid rate. When the dollar inflates at 7% a year, that, that means that over the course of 10 years, you double the supply of the dollars. So therefore, the half-life of money in a dollar is 10 years. Um, as the stock-to-flow ratio goes up, the half-life in the money goes up. The natural frequency slows down. Gold has a half-life of 35 years. Obviously, gold is a better money than the peso. It's a better money than soybeans. But now you see the real key is what is the natural frequency of the asset? And what's brilliant about Bitcoin is it started with a higher frequency, but that natural frequency is going uh, to infinity. It's becoming a very low frequency money. Next year after the halving, stock to flow is 120. The half-life of your economic energy and the money of Bitcoin goes to 100 years. In the year 2036, the half-life of your economic energy in Bitcoin becomes a thousand years. In 2048, the half-life of your economic energy in Bitcoin is 10,000 years. Now, politicians want to tell you that this is impossible. Commodities and nature tells you this is impossible. But look at my chart here. In your lifetime, there is one asset that has a long enough frequency that you can actually expect to keep your money forever. This is economic immortality. When stock to flow, when flow goes to zero, stock to flow goes to infinity, the money lasts forever. If the money lasts forever, you have hope. What is money? Perfect money is a way to escape the misery of the economic war that is depriving you, your family, and your company of 99.9% .9 of everything you have 
with absolute certainty. And there is no amount of work and there is no amount of trading, no amount of thinking and, that is going to escape this reality. You're going to have to find this solution. What's the winning strategy? There's only one winning strategy that I see. It's hold the best money. If you hold the dollar, which is the best currency, you're going to zero. If you hold a weaker currency, you're going to zero in a few years. Gold is a sort of better money than the currency. Stocks are a better money than gold. Bitcoin is a better money than the stocks. But let's talk about this a bit. The conventional, the conventional uh, organization, company, investor, they think the S&P index they think corporate equity is the best money. They have monetized it, and that's what they're using. And so I wanted to break down what corporate equity looks like versus Bitcoin. You know, the, the, the traditional return of the S&P index is about 7% a year. Well, Bitcoin should, in theory, return 14% a year. It's returned a lot more. It's returning 40, 50% a year over the past three years and much higher over a longer period. But I want to I want to lay out the reason that companies don't work as well as perfect money or digital money. First of all, you've got you've got the dilution that comes from management. The management's going to pay themselves 1% of your return every year. You've got the risk of labor. Uh, companies unionize, they have to pay labor, the cost of labor keeps going up. It's another 1%. <clears throat> You've got competition. There's going to be someone that's going to produce more gold or more iPhones or more something, more computers. It's going to cost you another 1%. You've got technology. You had a really good camera business and then the camera becomes software. It's going to cost you 1%. You've got regulation. The EU is going to actually fine Facebook or Google for doing something on the web. It's going to cost you 1%. You've got taxation. If I can locate your employees, locate your management, locate your company, locate your headquarters, it's going to cost you 1%. And then you've got war. And the war may be a hot war where you've got a tanker and I blow it up. Or it may be an economic war like a tariff. And I'm just going to put a 25% tariff on you. Companies have all those risks. If you ask what's the cost of it, about 7% a year. What you can expect is over time, over 100 years, you're always going to pay the 7%. Now, what's the implication of getting a 7% yield versus a 14% yield? Because Bitcoin actually avoids that. How does Bitcoin avoid it? The Bitcoin virtues are we replace management with cybernetic control. The software controls the system, not people. The software does the work for free. I replace labor with a digital system. I replace competition with an immaculate conception. There's only one Bitcoin. Satoshi gave it as a gift to the world. There's no competitor. There's no second best. Why? Because someone created this, gave it away to the rest of us without any beneficial interest in it. That's what makes it unique, irreplaceable, you know, special. That instead of technology risk, like the iPhone 15, Bitcoin is just money, 121 millionth of everything that's ever going to be. It's not going to actually obsolesce. It's immortal product. In a thousand years, you're going to want to own 121 millionth of everything there is. In a hundred thousand years, you're going to want to own 121 millionth of everything there is. That's how you escape the competitive, uh, the competitive downdraft. And that's how you avoid the technology destruction. And of course, with regulation, taxation and war, by being a digital asset, you're living in cyberspace. You can't destroy it. It's, it's indestructible, it's incorruptible, it's global. Bitcoin's going to duck the exposures of these other systems. So what's the implication of that? If you had a million dollars today in your company or in your family and you hold it in cash in the world reserve currency at a 7% inflation rate, in 100 years, you will have in today's dollars, $977. You will go from a million to a thousand. You'll lose a thousand X. It's one divided by two to the 10th. 
If you take all your million dollars and buy government bonds yielding three and a half percent interest, you're gonna have a three and a half percent negative real yield. Carry that for a hundred years, you're gonna have thirty-one thousand dollars, three percent of your wealth. If you're brilliant and you invest in the S and P, you're gonna have a million dollars. You'll have the same value, the same wealth in a hundred years you have right now, but no more. If you take half of it and invest it in Bitcoin. And the other half in the S&P, you're going to have $512 million. And if you go 100% Bitcoin, you're going to be a billionaire. All you're going to do is flip your million dollars into Bitcoin, hold it at 7% real yield 100 years. And that's, that's the money you have times two to the 10. And so you can see in a very simple way, there's a winning strategy, there's a losing strategy. Every other strategy is, you know, the trading, the investing, it's just a waste of time. <clears throat> you could ask, what about the real world? Here's real world in the last two and a half years since MicroStrategy entered Bitcoin. Bitcoin has outperformed the S&P, the NASDAQ, gold, silver, and bonds. Bonds are destroying wealth, silver is destroying wealth, gold is destroying wealth. Bitcoin's crushing everybody and you can say, well, what about micro strategy? All the guys on Twitter, they're all like, they're all like Twitter trolls. Hey, you lost some money investing in Bitcoin. That's the micro strategy performance. That is your company on a Bitcoin standard. That is your family on a Bitcoin standard. See, you just keep, you keep dollar cost averaging or Bitcoin cost averaging. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what price you buy. What matters is you keep buying and you don't sell and you don't invest in the bonds, the silver, the gold, and the rest. The future? The world's in an economic war, but the world is beginning to realize Bitcoin is the superior asset. And as they realize that, Bitcoin is gonna demonetize all these other assets over time. It's, gonna, it's going to first demonetize gold, because gold doesn't make any sense. And then it's going to demonetize the other store of value assets, the real estate, the S&P index, the bonds. And so you're going to get a 30x bump as we demonetize gold, but there's no reason why you can't have a 500x increase in today's dollars by demonetizing these other things. And I'll end with this thought. <laughs> we have laser eyes. Because laser eyes say, focus on what you can change. Save what you can save. In this particular case, you can make Bitcoin a success. You can tell the world about Bitcoin. No country can stop inflation. Nobody can stop inflation. I can put you in charge of the world. You cannot stop inflation. 99% of the companies, they cannot outrun inflation. 99% of the workers, they cannot outrun inflation. 1% may beat the market by skill and luck. Don't assume you'll be the 1%. Everybody, everybody can buy Bitcoin. So buy Bitcoin.